The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good work. Study to show thyself a prudent to God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth. How many lessons are there for us to learn from each and every word of the Lord which has been rightly given for us in the original languages of the scriptures with absolute authority to exegete, to isolate, and to really categorize the subject on the principle of hermeneutics and give the real subject with the right knowledge of dispensations, with proper dispensing and making to understand for the one who have been given under our charge as the faithful church, the outcalled one ecclesia, so that we could be knowing our master in heaven with whom there is no respecter of persons. We should be faithfully fearing and trembling him with a true heart and really handle his word with absolute purity in our soul and spirit by the cleansing of our sins through rebound in the privacy of our priesthood and really inculcating day by day process because the people may think day by day process is not possible. But when our Lord has established that as a rule to convert from cave of robbers into a house of prayer, how much more we need to be today. When in the realm of this unique dispensation of the church age, it has become a Satan's throne and Satan's synagogue, a copulation point for Satan where Satan is producing false teachers. But Lord has given a right discernment in our spirit. When we are in the fellowship of blood, we are the Holy Spirit. He causes us to believe what is true and he rejects us to know what is wrong. That's why the spirit being a filtering factor, the thing which has been communicated as a false one doesn't have action in their life to really wake up and to be alive as of the word of the Lord is alive and powerful. But when the real word has been spoken, the people will definitely come to the reality of the truth. They are no longer being dead again. They will transform at Glencoe. They will really be convinced of their guilt and now they are living a life that which should be pleasable to Jehovah. That is what their lives are. But much of the time what is happening today in our pulpit? In Daniel 9.13, the way how Daniel prays to the Lord. Father, we have departed from thy, from thy word. In our depravity we were there and we could not we could not come back to the intelligence of the use of the word so that we could know what exactly was went wrong. Why are these things? Because the pastor teaches today, as told in Ezekiel chapter 13 verses 12 and following, they have been really daubing you with untempered mortar which will not stand when the great sword or famine or pestilence will come. So is the reason why these people are teaching false teachers and false teachings which will definitely make them to have gnosis but not epinosis doctrine. Gnosis is what it will store into their mind but epinosis will go to the heart and definitely will transform them to walk according to the word. Since it is a fakery of the doctrine, the spirit being a filter there, it filters that and it says no, it can be only in a resting place but it cannot enter into the heart. Because though you believe the false teaching, you will not have any action of the word to really transform you to the reality of the word, which is quite objectable or, or which is quite likable in the sight of Jehovah, which our Lord has created in his own image. So that we could show forth to the essence box of God by defending the way how Satan was a personal God. Its work was to be a defender of divine holiness of God in essence. So is our work as well. Now that same work has been given to this man who has been created after the image of one God, given him everything perfect, absolutely blameless, but he fell. But now what we have to do as per 1 Peter 2.9, marvelously being transformed from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, what we need to do, we need to show forth exactly the valor, the vigor, the virtue of Christ on this earth. And now the virtue or the essence box of Christ on this earth is nothing but showing forth the work of Satan which was there in protecting the divine, defending upon the divine holiness of God in essence. Now we need to do that work. And that's what Satan says you will not come to know. That's why it has been culminating the truth in the pulpit. Till we could get completed Bible in our hands in 1611, a character translation, though it has some anachronism. 
people failed to exegete this word. In the 18th century, we had great exposition by the Brethren Assembly, like William Kelly, C.H. McIntosh, Jane Darby, and many more. The one who came to India, the great one, William Carey. The main intention was to see the pulpit order should be once again set back to the work of a rule of a true bona fide gifted pastor teacher. They couldn't concentrate anything apart from that. They knew the burden of a pastor teacher, what it could be, not to be daubed with untempered mortar, but to tell them the truth, expose the truth. But Satan's plan is always really cunning and fabulous, really deceiving. That's why these people couldn't really understand. And now in the 19th or the 20th century, we could find greatest one in the America, the one Robert Bunker Thieme. And furthermore, his teachings through exegesis and isagogics. Many more lessons for his entire life that he spent. Today, at least 10% of the congregation of the pastors could really understand what is isagogics, categories or exegesis. They would really value and worth the teachings of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, through RBT May. But what are happening today? Legal. No proper exposition. The client nation USA is in the same condition for God, then how will be the other nations? But one thing which we have been promised by God, any nation that works according to the uprightness of Jehovah, our Lord says, is going to bless that nation. And we are here now, in this era, when once we depart, we are not going to come again. We are here being placed for a very great work. No angel can take the form of a flesh, but we have taken it. But though we are having an outward cover of flesh, we are spiritual species. Our generation, our regeneration, our really working for Lord God, the Holy Spirit, is this time. This time of great truth, what we need to communicate. This time of great work, what we need to do in this flesh. But many of the people have really not understood this great work. That's why what they have done, they have really gone to the way of Balaam. They have gone into the gain sayings of Korah. They have really thought that Nicola Thine's deed will be absolutely great and they're compromising each and everything in our pulpits. This is what it is happening today in our churches. But the word of the Lord says you need to be faithful enough to handle the word of the truth. With God there is no respecter of persons. God is not going to respect you because you have a good and great genealogy. God is not going to do this. No, God is not going to do that. That's why even we find in Galatians 3.14, which says to us, how did you receive your spirit? Your, your spirit was been received by faith. As Abraham received by faith his salvation, so we are receiving our salvation. And along with that, we are receiving the indwelling ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. But today they want to make a gimmicks about the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. There are some morons in Indians because they know demon-possessed countries, the believers, they think they are getting the demon possession. And the pastor teacher wants to say they have been just water baptized. They have not taken the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, demon possession will be in them. This is what an explanation one moron gives. And he proclaims in the satellite channels as well the same thing. How much they are really grieving and squelching the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. How much they are misunderstanding the word. How much they are misapplying the word. How much they are misinterpreting the truth. Every believer ought to stand at the judgment seat of Christ as such what has been given to him and what he is and what he is not. And what he ought to be. The only failure will be taken care by the back of the pastor teacher who has really failed to communicate the truth. With a true bona fide gifted pastor teacher, I, I, I knew only one thing. If a pastor teacher has a true bona fide gift, he will never stop communicating the truth, no matter what it is. He never wants to worry about the softies. He will not exchange the glory of Lord for some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley. His work is what? To tell as the word of the Lord is. To tell and to rightly divide the word of the truth is. Because we have a master in heaven. And that master, we need to answer him back. Because with him there is no respecter of persons. But what are we doing today in our pulpits? We shall see our judgment later on. But let me enjoy today. As long as it has been called today, Seth Hebrews 3, 7 through 15, you should exhort one another. You should really make them to understand the truth. But they say as long as today has been called, let me enjoy my belly, let me fulfill the lustful patterns of my old sin nature, and what the hell we care about the word of the Lord, let it go to trash, that's what they say. That's what it is happening around, that's what the apostatized Christian is all about. If there is a real interpretation of the word of the Lord, they would say, let my life go to death, 
though death is working inward me, uh, though that is that working in me, life in you should be working, said Apostle Paul. That will be the principle. Though outward man perishes, inward man has to be renewed. That's the second principle, day by day renovation. And why the death will be working in Apostle Paul as such a great pastor teacher? Because he has to sit and study. He doesn't have anything more on this earth to be done. His primary target, his primary mission, his primary life is to really isolate, exegete, and categorize the subject. Really teach the word of the Lord with great authority. And to really take into the core, to the point, and to teach face to face as it is a fact to the truth. Homologia, that's what you speak. As it is a fact to the truth. What does the truth say and what is the fact? You need to look and you have to change, you have to align yourself to the truth. No vain delusions, no vain glory, no walking in the lustful patterns of the flesh of man, but rather walking out what is the will of God. That's what you need to do. That's why they daubed with untempered martyr, they couldn't get anything profit from that. So are many people are here today. That's why the Lord says in Jeremiah 16 as well, you do not sit with them, you do not eat with them, you do not drink with them, you do not enter into their house because I have cursed them. And today when we come to the offering, what do they want to ask? They want to ask each and everything what it could be feasible in their minds, whether he's an unbeliever, whether he's the one who is giving into the realm of what thinking, even they don't want to look, just money is coming, put an account number in a satellite, get the money done, and be happy with that money, whether it is a righteous one, whether it is an acceptable one, whether it has been a real great glory to those people who have given, because they have been given by learning the word of the Lord or not, that's what really makes the difference. That's why our Lord said, no, you're not going to enter into their house. You're not going to sit. You're not going to drink. You're not going to eat. So pure is our Lord. How much more pure our Lord trains above when we could be right faithful pastor teachers for him. Why? The seven lamb stands up before him. They are listening to the thunderings, lightnings, and to the sound of Jehovah. The seven lamb stands to nothing but the seven churches. The seven churches of the doctrine which has been really given in this earth to each and every local church. And the seven angels are nothing but the seven pastor teachers. And Lord knows how to train us up in each and every word. Because it is He who is going to construct the house. But what are we doing today in our churches, dear brother? We do not even know. We just denominate it into denominations. And say, this is great, that is great. No, Lord looks only at one. He looks at the universal church and He knows the church should be a ground and pillar of truth. And the believers will come there to become a pillar, the one who overcomes into the foundation of the church, which is going to come in the future. That's what our Lord looks. That's what our Lord trains the pastor teachers over there to train them up. But many people cannot understand these things. The cunning nature of Satan is always to deceive you by making you to look into miracles or healings or tongues or legal things and teaching you some moral standards of living on this earth. And that is what they think it will be great for them to achieve because they have already achieved it to the greatest. You cannot be cold or hot. You cannot be lukewarm. With Lord only you need to be always hot, jealous man. And you should have a cold mind to think, to concentrate, to tell, under pressure to learn the word of the Lord no matter what it is. And to get back to the reality of the word, that's what you should be in a cool mind. That many people can't understand because they do not know what is the end of the conflict going around. They do not come to the point of realization how the temptations will come for us through Satan so that you could depart from the word easily with lame excuses, useless reasons. And when you go back to heaven, you will find these reasons were really not worthy. It's really were not worthy to give second priority for doctrine. To really worry about these things and to set apart the word of the Lord and give number one priority for the useless and worthless solutions on this earth for this useless pilgrimage trip, which the world can think it is main for them. But we call it as a useless pilgrimage trip because we are not of this world. What you eat, what you drink, what you make, what you make a property. All these things in the sight of the Lord are useless, worthless, vanity of vanities. And I am saying this under the authority of the word of the Lord given to me. 
because you have much time invested in earning them, making them, laboring for the food which perishes is not number one priority. Your number one priority as a heavenly citizens on this earth is to be laboring for the food which perisheth not. These things are required. That's why the Lord really divides 24 hours into three parts of eight hours each. Eight hours you sleep, eight hours you work, make what is required. Because our Lord said, go and see the fowl of the hair. How am I going to give for them food? The very hair upon your head has been counted. Why do you want to worry about the food? What is going to come? First you seek me, my righteousness and my kingdom, and everything will be added unto you. What a great lesson for us. And furthermore, our Lord says, in this remaining eight hours, four hours you enjoy with your family life, with your XYZ reasons, with your recreational purposes. And the remaining four hours you can purely give to God. Whichever manner you can think, you can give your 10% of your time to God every day, 2 hours, 40 minutes minimum. And since you are not organized, you are not being particular in your thinking, you are not being known how to orient to the grace of the life of God given to us, you can never understand what is this truth we are proclaiming. This truth which is your life. This truth which is nothing but you were witnessing on this earth. When you go back to heaven, you will find what our lame excuses have given. How much of time I would have spent in doctrine, I left it out. And that time you want to come back again into this flesh, to this world, you will not. The better option will be not just reading the Bible, but writing the Bible upon your knees if you are still young. Train up your children to go in that manner. And if he's having the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher only to a male believer, never to a female. His work is to write the second time in the original language of the scriptures. And if you think it is very heavy burden, then our Lord says, my burden is easy and my yoke is very light. Come unto me all you are labored, I will give you rest. Every day, every day, every day, when he trains up up, it is of a great privilege, great joy, great pleasure for us to be trained under his arm. Why? Because we need to gain strength and to uphold his word above his name. And on this earth, there is nothing more important than to give number one priority for doctrine, to learn the truth, to know the truth, and to execute the truth. So which way you want to go, you decide, as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our headboard and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In order to link Lord God the Father, that you believe upon Christ, that is the moment itself, you shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for is for very simple, believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the great man is to grow up in grace and the knowledge of Bible doctrine. You shall learn to acquire to possess another truth, and the truth shall set you free. And whereas for the pastor teacher, the great man of district, Karus, Othon, Lagan, herald the word in season and out of season because of the diamond from my witnesses where they have been called. The number one diamond from my witnesses in dual infinity, followed by the Bible in our hands. And number two diamond from my witnesses are hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brother, not worry besides nature, the entire angelic course will be our witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of truth. Not to worry about the softies but rather handle that which has been given upon our shoulders to know and to make them to learn in the light. So which way, dear brother, you want to go, you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship with the word. We pray that, Lord, God, the whole spirit will challenge us in these things so that, Lord, through this message, many people might be known the real purpose of their life on this earth and could really come back and understand what is the purpose of writing upon their knees the Bible which thou have given to us. No greater work than this to be glorified for thee on this earth. Help us to purely execute this protocol plan of God as the three stages of the thorough spiritual life. And help us to stand from the evidence testing as well, Lord, so that, Father, we could boldly come out with flying colors in the testing that you are going to keep for us. To this extent, we pray that, Lord God, the whole spirit will challenge us, for we ask it in Christ's name, Father.